This lesson is brought to you by Nilfisk University, where excellence is attained through active learning. This training module will provide you with use and care instructions for the Clark CA60 battery-operated walk-behind auto scrubber. These instructions will allow you to safely and productively use the machine for daily cleaning and maintain the machine for years of high-quality cleaning. This training is not intended to replace the operator's manual that shipped with your machine. Please review and follow all operational and safety steps contained in the manual. After successfully completing this lesson, you will be able to identify CA60 components and their function, explain how to inspect and prepare the machine for use, list the steps necessary to start the scrubbing function, explain how to operate the machine including the various cleaning modes and how and when to use them, explain machine cleanup procedure, describe battery charging process, and perform daily, weekly, and other routine maintenance tasks. This training will begin with an introduction of the available machine packages for the CA60. Next, we'll follow a review of the components and features of the machine. We will then cover the daily use and care steps, which you will follow for a shift of cleaning, including machine setup, using the machine to provide clean, safe, dry floors, and cleaning up the machine after a shift of cleaning. We will conclude with a review of the routine maintenance tasks for the machine. The CA60 machines are available in a few different machine configuration packages with a few different options to custom fit the machine to your application and your specific needs. Each of the differences in machines will be addressed during this training. Machine packages are based on scrub deck type and size with options of 20 inch 51 centimeter cleaning path in both disc or boost orbital and 24 inch 61 centimeter boost. Motor-based traction or brush assist packages for disc machines, all orbital machines are standard with motor traction, and battery type including wet or maintenance-free batteries. Your machine may also include some of the following options as well. Options include onboard detergent mixing system, baseboard cleaner, and waste basket mop holder kit. CA60 Machine Components the machine has a scrub deck up front and will either be a rectangular boost style with yellow weights included to increase scrub pressure or a round disc style with splash skirt to prevent solution spray while scrubbing. At the back of the machine is the squeegee assembly used to recover the used dirty solution. The body of the machine consists of two tanks. The lower tank, which makes up much of the rotomolded body of the machine, is the solution tank and a recovery tank which sits on top of the solution tank. The solution tank has a fill port and cap at the front of the machine. There is a solution tank level sight gauge at the back of the machine. This hose used for the gauge can be disconnected and used to drain the solution tank or alternatively used to fill the solution tank with the appropriate hose connection. Transport wheels, which will be powered by a motor for most models. External solution filter with isolation valve to keep debris out of the solution system. The recovery tank has a large cover with durable sealing gasket and provides a large opening for easy cleanout of the recovery tank. Inside the recovery tank is the debris catch cage to keep recovered debris from clogging the tank drain hose or floor drain. Float ball shutoff valve system to protect the vacuum motor from recovered solution if the recovery tank gets too full. Batteries for powering the machine. Detergent bottle for optional onboard detergent system. Handlebar for steering and for pushing the machine for non-traction models touch activation switches to engage the cleaning system and traction system, reverse switch located on the opposite side of the handle from what is shown here, control panel which we will cover next, recovery tank drain hose, squeegee raise lower lever, charger cord and storage area with charger port, deck raise lower foot lever for the disc machines, squeegee assembly, and the recovery hose which connects to the squeegee assembly. The CA60 control panel includes battery level LEDs to indicate battery level while scrubbing, hour meter, key switch, solution control buttons with LED indication of current flow selection, detergent concentration knob which is part of the optional onboard detergent system, this knob will not be present if the option is not installed, one touch scrub button to activate scrub system, vacuum control button turns vacuum on and off, Click off brush button for disc versions, allowing you to automatically remove a brush or pad driver. This same button location for boost machines will be the down pressure selection button. 
and speed control, which is used for traction models only. Preparing the machine for use. To assure successful trouble-free scrubbing performance, there are a few preparation and inspection steps that must be completed prior to cleaning ship with your CA60. If the machine's storing steps were properly followed after the previous use, then you should find the machine like this. The onboard charger cord plugged into an outlet. The brush or pad cleaned and either connected to the machine already or close by and ready to use. The rear squeegee cleaned and in good condition and installed at the back of the machine or close by and ready for use. The recovery tank empty and cleaned out with the tank tipped out exposing the batteries. Let's look at these steps in a bit more detail. Before unplugging the machine, look at the charge level indication display just left of the cord connection point and cord wrap on the back of the machine. If the LED is green, the batteries are fully charged and ready. If the red LED is on, the batteries are still early in their charging cycle. If the yellow light is on, the batteries are getting closer to fully charged, but not there yet. You can use the machine if the yellow LED is lit, but the machine should get a full charge to the point of the green light coming back on each day of use to properly maintain and extend the usable life of the batteries. Never store the machine in a discharged state. Unplug the battery charger cord and wrap the cord in the cord storage area as shown. During charging, the recovery tank should be tipped out to prevent buildup of hydrogen gas from the battery outgassing. Tip the recovery tank back into the normal operating position now. Inspect pad or brush to assure it is fit for use. Pads or brushes should be clean and free of any larger debris. Using a dirty or overly worn pad or brush can damage the machine and or floor you are looking to clean. Clean the pad or brush if necessary prior to use. Inspect the pads or brushes and determine if there is enough pad or brush life for the scrubbing you are about to complete. If not, replace the pads or brushes as needed. Also replace the pad if there are any tears or missing areas. Make sure you have the correct pad or brush type for the scrubbing that needs to be performed. An overly aggressive brush or pad can degrade or damage the floor finish instead of just cleaning it. For boost machines, using a rectangular pad, remove the pad by pulling from the rear corner and peeling away the pad from the Velcro-like system on the scrubbing space. For disc machines, manually rotate the brush or pad driver to release it. The machine also has an auto brush removal button for disc machines. To use this function, with the deck raised, press the brush release button, which will cause the brush to momentarily spin, and then the brush or pad will drop off. For brushes, if half the original length of the bristle is consumed, the scrubbing performance will begin to degrade and the brush should be replaced. Pad and brush installation is different between the boost and disc versions of the CA60. We'll start with installing a pad on a boost style machine. Boost machines feature a fixed rectangular pad driver head with Velcro-like hook material on the face that holds the pad. To install a pad with the deck raised, slide the pad under the deck and lift it up and press it in place onto the scrub head face, making sure to line it up evenly. When using the boost machine to remove floor finish, install a new red or similar scrubbing pad and then place the maroon surface preparation pad beneath the red pad. The maroon pad should never be attached directly to the boost driver face. An optional double-sided Velcro sheet is available to hold the SPP pad to the other pad so it stays attached when you raise the boost head. Brush or pad driver installation for disc machines. You can install the brush by hand manually by lifting the brush into position and giving it a slight rotation to lock it into place. Or, you can automatically install the brush with the following steps. Center the brush directly below the scrub head as shown in the image. Use the foot pedal to lower the scrub deck, aligning the scrub head directly over the pad holder or brush. Wiggling the machine side to side slightly will help make sure the brush hub engages with the brush or pad driver. Turn on the machine and set the speed to minimum by turning the speed control dial, if so equipped, all the way counterclockwise to minimum speed. Press the scrub system activation button and then momentarily press the activation switch on the handle to engage the pad driver or brush. Use your foot on the lever to raise the scrub head again to assure proper installation of the brush or pad driver. Recovery tank inspection. Lift the lid of the recovery tank and make sure the recovery tank is empty. Check the float ball cage and make sure it is clean and the ball moves freely. To do this, twist the body of the ball float system and remove from the machine. The bottom can be twisted to access and clean the float ball. The foam ring at the top of the float system 
should be free of debris and hair to maximize airflow and solution pickup. Inspect the debris catch cage and empty it if necessary. Inspect the cover gasket, ensure it is properly in place and in good condition to assure proper water recovery. Squeegee inspection and installation. Remove the squeegee assembly from the rear of the machine by loosening the two knobs that lock it in place. For proper water pickup performance, the squeegee should be reasonably clean and free of debris. Clean it if debris is present before using. Squeegees will wear over time and their water pickup efficiency will be reduced with wear. There are two rubber blades used with the squeegee. The front edge of the rearmost blade is the one that is most critical to leaving a floor clean, safe, and dry. The front edge of the rear squeegee should be free of wear and rips. If the squeegee is worn halfway through the width of the blade or more, or ripped, the squeegee should be rotated to put a fresh edge to the floor or replaced. Each squeegee has four wear sides to help assure you have excellent water pickup. To flip or replace the rear squeegee, release the clip in the middle of the squeegee assembly to release the strap that holds the rear squeegee in place. Make the squeegee changes and then reinstall the strap. For the front squeegee maintenance, two knobs on the outside of the edges of the squeegee are used to release the tension on the front squeegee retaining strap, which will allow you to maintain the front squeegee. Attach the squeegee to the machine with the squeegee knobs and tighten them hand tight. Do not over tighten the squeegee knobs as it is designed to safely break away if it hits an object during operation. Reconnect the vacuum hose to the squeegee vacuum port. The final inspection step is to give the machine a quick walk around and look for anything that looks worn, loose, damaged, leaking, or out of place. Address issues found with the machine before using for cleaning. Filling the machine. The CA60 has two fill port locations. One is located on the front of the machine and allows filling by either a hose or a bucket. The second is located at the back of the machine and doubles as the solution tank level tube. Connecting a hose to the top of the level tube is the other filling option. Fill the machine with clean water. The solution level sight tube on the rear of the machine can let you know when you are close to full to prevent an overflow. Fill to the one mark on the rotomolded tank. Hot water cleans more effectively, but the temperature should not exceed 130 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 54 degrees Celsius. Adding detergent. If your machine does not have the optional onboard detergent mixing system, add the proper amount of auto scrubber compatible detergent to the solution tank while filling to assure it gets properly mixed. If your machine has the onboard detergent mixing system, you need to remove and inspect the onboard detergent bottle to assure there is enough detergent for the planned cleaning activity. Tip out the recovery tank and assure there is enough detergent in the detergent bottle. To remove and fill the detergent bottle, loosen the smaller cap and lift out the bottle. Open the larger cap to fill the detergent or to clean it out. Put the recovery tank back in place after filling the detergent bottle. We are now ready to transport the machine to the area to be cleaned. Turn on the machine by turning the key to the on position. Look at the battery power level LEDs on the control panel to assure there is sufficient battery power to complete the planned scrubbing task. Green LED is full battery charge and yellow is partial. If the red LED is lit, you should plug the unit into charge before using. For machines without traction, manually push the machine to the area to be cleaned. For machines with traction assist, Machine motion is started and stopped by pressing and releasing either activation switch on the handlebar. Transport speed is controlled by turning the speed adjustment dial clockwise is faster. It is good practice to turn the speed down to low prior to activating motion so the speed is controllable. For reverse, press the reverse switch while pressing either activation switch. To steer the machine, push the handle to the right or to the left to change the direction of the machine. Activating the scrub system is different depending on disc or boost style decks. For disc machines, use your hand to lower the squeegee to the floor so that you can recover the used solution. Lower the disc scrub deck to the ground using the foot pedal on the back right of the machine. Push down and shift your foot to the right to allow the pedal to rise and lower the scrub deck. Press the one touch scrub activation button. This will arm the scrub deck solution system and onboard chemical dilution system if present on the machine. The vacuum will turn on. LEDs above the armed and active systems will light up. 
all systems will operate when either activation switch on the handle is pushed and stop again when released. To activate the boost style scrub deck, use your hand to lower the squeegee to the floor so you can recover used solution. Press the scrub activation button. This will lower the boost scrub head to the floor and arm the scrub deck, the solution and onboard chemical dilution system if present on your machine. The vacuum will also turn on. LEDs above the armed or active systems will light up. All systems will become active when either activation switch on the handle is pushed and stop again when released. The boost deck will perform best if the deck is level on the ground. There is a bubble level built into the sides of the boost decks. If the bubble is not in the center of the level when the deck is down and stopped, you can level the deck by turning the deck leveling knob at the front of the boost deck. While scrubbing, there are a number of adjustments that can be made to the scrub parameters to optimize cleaning performance for an application. You can increase or decrease your speed by turning the speed adjustment knob. Faster speeds increase productivity, but may reduce the depth of cleaning if other parameters are held constant. You can increase or decrease the amount of solution being applied by pushing the plus or minus solution buttons. LED indicators will show which of the four flow levels is active. If you push the minus button until no LEDs are lit, the solution system will be off. Having the flow set at the minimum level of flow that allows you to reach your desired cleaning results will increase your productivity by increasing the amount of time scrubbing per solution tank built. More solution is required for more heavily soiled areas. Boost machines have two scrub pressures available. You can select the high or low scrub pressure setting by pressing the scrub pressure button. Lights above the button will indicate what scrub pressure is active. The high scrub pressure mode will provide a deeper cleaning or allow you to clean more quickly and achieve your desired cleaning results. If there is a need for lower scrub pressure than the minimum setting, the yellow weights on the scrub deck can be removed by removing the locking knobs. If your machine is equipped with the onboard detergent dilution system, you can adjust the detergent level on the fly from no detergent, cleaning with just water, with the knob turned all the way to counterclockwise, to a maximum of 2.5% if the adjustment knob is turned fully to the right. Look at the manufacturer's label on the bulk bottle to determine the recommended dilution strength recommended for your type of cleaning. In cleaner areas of your facility, Using less detergent can reduce detergent spend while still achieving the desired cleaning results. The decal located by the onboard detergent bottle can help you correlate the colors on the dilution setting dial with the actual detergent concentration setting applied to the floor. Pressing the vacuum button to turn the vacuum off and lifting the squeegee off the floor with the lift lever will put the machine in the double scrub mode, leaving solution on the floor to dwell and help break up stubborn soils allowing you to go over the heavily soiled area additional times with additional solution to better clean the floor. After soils have been released, lower the squeegee and turn the vacuum back on to recover the used solution in the area. The CA60 can also be used as a wet-dry vacuum to recover water without scrubbing. With the scrub system off, lower the squeegee to the ground and press the vacuum button to turn on the vacuum. In addition to great everyday cleaning, Boost bottles of the CA60 provide the ability to remove floor finish using just water in combination with a maroon surface preparation pad, or SPP pad for short. Never install a maroon SPP pad directly to the boost face. Use a new red or other daily scrubbing pad to protect the boost face as shown here. Pre-wet the maroon pad and then lower the boost head with red or other pad already installed on the boost face. For best finish removal results, the machine needs to be run with high down pressure, low solution flow with detergent off, dial turned fully counterclockwise to the off position, and slow transport speed, about 60 feet per minute, to allow proper finish removal. If you travel too fast, less finish will get removed. Leave the squeegee down and the vacuum on to recover the solution and removed finish. The SPP pad will lose its abrasiveness with use and will need to be flipped or replaced. Clean the floor again with just water and a red or similar pad to remove any residual finish and then apply some fresh finish. To maximize your cleaning efficiency and safety, here are some good guidelines.
Plan your route carefully to use as many long straight runs as possible to minimize turns and maximize productivity. Use a consistent overlap, enough overlap to not miss services, but not too much to reduce productivity. When cleaning along walls or shelving, use the right side of the machine since the scrub deck is shifted to the right and provides a guide wheel on the deck to make control along a wall easy. Consider the area being cleaned and adjust the machine cleaning parameters to be as efficient as possible. Example, if the floor is reasonably clean already, then you should have solution level, detergent level, and scrub pressure set at low levels and only increase them if a heavier soil load is encountered. Pay special attention to blind corners to avoid a potential collision. Finally, regularly examine water recovery and cleaning performance. If you are not leaving floors clean, safe, and dry, make the necessary adjustments to the machine or squeegee. Eventually, the solution tank will get used up and the recovery tank will become full with the recovered solution. The sight tube on the back of the machine allows you to know the solution tank level. The CA60 has a ball float valve that protects the vacuum motor from ingesting water. Once the ball float activates, the vacuum motor pitch will change to a higher pitch sound and squeegee will no longer pick up water. Usually, you will run out of water before the float ball engages. When the solution tank is empty, or the recovery tank full, transport the machine to a suitable location to empty it. Remove the recovery tank drain hose from its storage clip at the back of the machine. Bend the hose over to prevent flow and remove the cap. Lower and release the hose towards the drain opening. Reinstall the drain hose cap and put the hose back in its storage location after draining. If more scrubbing is to be completed, fill the machine again and go clean. After using the machine for a while, one of two things will happen. You will have completed your scrubbing task for the shift, or the battery will have become depleted to the point of requiring a charge. Either way, the cleanup and storage process is the same. If it is the battery that runs low on power first, the battery gauge LEDs will have moved from green through yellow to red. When the red LED is lit, the batteries are fully depleted and need to be recharged. At this point, scrubbing functions will automatically turn off. The vacuum and propulsion systems will remain active to allow you to recover the used solution and transport back to the charging station and recharge after the machine storing steps. Never store a fully discharged battery as this reduces the usable life of the batteries. Storing the machine. Following proper daily machine cleanup activities will assure proper performance from your machine over time and help avoid bad orders that can accompany a poorly maintained recovery tank. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Empty the recovery tank as previously discussed during dumping and refilling, and thoroughly rinse it out to remove any and all debris from the tank. Remove and clean out the large debris catch cage and then put it back in place. Rinse off the ball float cage and make sure that the ball moves freely to protect the vacuum motor. Remove and rinse the recovery tank lid. Drain the solution tank if detergent is mixed in the solution tank by disconnecting the level sight tube and dumping solution down the drain as shown. If only clean tap water is in the solution tank, as is normal when the machine is equipped with onboard detergent dilution system, it is not necessary to empty the solution tank if clean water is left at the end of the cleaning shift, if the machine will be used again soon. Remove and rinse off the squeegee to clean and inspect it to make sure that the blades are not worn, ripped, or torn. If they need to be flipped or replaced, do that now as described in the Preparing the Machine for Use section, then install the squeegee. Remove the pad brushes or pad drivers as described in the Preparing Machine for Use section. Remember for the disc machines, there is an auto click off button to make this a bit easier. Rinse the pad or brush off and remove any large debris that may be present. Inspect the pads or brushes and see if the pads need to be changed or flipped over and check to see if the brushes need to be replaced. If they do, do that now. Set them aside to dry or reinstall them on the machine. Charging the batteries. To maximize battery life, the batteries should be allowed to charge until the charger completes its charge cycle after every day of use even if the batteries did not get fully depleted during the cleaning tasks. Tip the cleaned and empty recovery tank out to expose the batteries during charging to prevent buildup of hydrogen gas. When tipped out, the recovery tank lid will open a bit to allow it to air dry. Plug the onboard battery charger cord at the back of the machine into the charger port at the back of the machine and a wall outlet 
to begin charging. The charge indicator light next to the charger port will go on if properly charging. It's also a good idea to take a wet rag and clean off the exterior of the machine and deck to keep the machine looking its best. Note, the battery charger charging algorithm should match the battery type installed in the machine, which will be either wet, gel, or AGM. Refer to the operator's manual or contact your local dealership for assistance when changing battery types to assure the correct charging algorithm is selected on your charger to prevent battery damage. Options include the optional baseboard cleaner available with boost bottles allows cleaning of a baseboard on the right side of the machine while scrubbing. The kit consists of a vertical pad system that mounts onto the right side of the boost deck with two knobs. When in use, a secondary guide wheel, which is part of the kit, can be locked in the outside position as a guide along the wall as shown. The optional waste basket and flat mop holder attaches to the left side of the machine to not impact edge cleaning and provides the obvious convenience. Onboard detergent metering system is also an option and was covered during the training already. Routine maintenance. Besides the maintenance steps that are completed on a daily basis to prepare and clean up the CA60, there are also periodic maintenance tasks that should be completed. Weekly, one should, for machines with wet style batteries, check the water level of each battery cell and add distilled water as needed. Fill to above the plates and to just below the bottom of the fill tube. Do not fill all the way to the top of the cell to allow for expansion while charging. Failure to keep battery fluid level above the battery lead plates will decrease the runtime and overall life of the batteries significantly. Caution. Batteries are filled with strong acid. Use care and protective equipment while inspecting and maintaining battery fluid levels. Clean solution filter. The filter is located on the left lower side of the machine with a filter indicator in the rotor mold. Turn the isolation valve for the filter to the closed position. Unscrew the filter cover, being careful not to lose the o-ring. Clean up the filter screen, reassemble, and be sure to open up the water valve or no solution will come out while scrubbing. Maintain the detergent solution system, which is optional. To clean and remove residual detergent from the detergent hoses, remove the detergent bottle by unscrewing the gray cap and replace it with a bottle filled with warm, clean water and run the scrub system with high solution flow and high detergent concentration setting for a few minutes to let the lines clean out. When finished purging, replace the detergent bottle with a detergent bottle filled with the proper concentrate and you'll be ready for your next cleaning. Squeegee pitch adjustment. When inspecting the squeegee, the squeegee should be evenly deflected across the whole rear squeegee when in use for optimal water recovery, as shown in the picture. If the squeegee is not even on the floor, either higher on the tips or in the middle, adjust the pitch of the squeegee. To adjust the squeegee pitch, turn the squeegee pitch adjustment knob in the appropriate direction and then lower the squeegee and verify even deflection across the rear blade. The following maintenance should be performed annually. The carbon brushes in the vacuum motor, the scrub deck motor, and the traction drive motor should be inspected for wear and replaced if necessary. Refer to the operator's manual or an authorized Nilfisk Clark service center for carbon brush inspection and replacement instructions or help. This concludes the instructional portion of this course.